The year is 1994. Shin Megami Tensai 2 explodes onto the Super Famicom, and it was met with a entirely average reception, but it did well enough to prove that the SMT series has the legs to continue onward. However, the bigwigs over at Atlas began to wonder if there might be something more they could do. Perhaps a bit of a change could be good for the series. Perhaps a shift towards that oh-so-lucrative teen demographic could be just the thing SMT needs. But how does one appeal to teenagers? And that is when someone, deep in the recesses of Atlas HQ, got a truly revolutionary idea. What if we set Shin Megami Tensai in a high school? I don't use the word hero very often. But you are the greatest hero in American history. Woohoo! Yes, that's right, you all know where this is going. SMT IF was the spiritual predecessor to the Persona series. The main character from IF even shows up in the first two Persona games, being flanked by a weird author self-insert character for some reason, but regardless, if you're a big fan of Persona like I am, you can thank IF's creation because it probably wouldn't have been the same without it. On top of the high school setting, IF also created the idea of having demons be part of who you are, you know, a kind of other self. Only instead of being called personas, they're called guardians in this. That all being said, it is still very much in the SMT camp, borrowing especially heavily from SMT2, including a good number of the art assets, as well as almost all of the music. But in the end, it is its own game. So. How exactly does it all play out? Well, why don't we find out together as we go and explore the entire story that is Shin Megami Tensai If. It was a day like any other, just another typical lazy school day at Karakazaka High. Or at least, it was. Without any notice or warning of any kind, the school began to shake violently. At first it just seemed like your typical earthquake, but once the shaking subsided, it was clear it was more than that. The air outside turned a deep purple, and where once there had been trees and roads, now looked more like an empty void. Like the school was floating in the depths of space itself. Whatever it was that was out there, it was clear we couldn't leave to the front door like we normally did. And that is when I remembered a dream I had while I was dozing off during class. Greetings, peons, chattel, and all other lowly worms beneath my feet. You must be honored to be basking in the presence of one as glorious as I. I am the one, the only Demon Emperor, Master of the Expanse, ruler of all demon kind. I too was once a lowly human like you, though even then I was a much more magnificent individual than any of you could ever hope to be. Regardless, I have appeared before you today to inform you that all your lives are now in my hands. I have come to watch as you lowly worms desperately try to entertain me. Life as a demon ever can get ever so dreary from time to time. I just felt I needed a little stimulation. So, I hope you'll try to put on a good show for me, won't you? <laughs> At the time, I just dismissed the dream as some weird part of my tired brain acting up, but... Thanks to this whole situation, it jumped to the forefront of my mind. Well, whether this demon emperor is real or not is a matter for later. For now, I decided to keep a level head and think about what I needed to do. For the time being, I came to the conclusion that the most important thing right now would be to try and find a way out of the school. However, I felt that it might not be a task that I should handle alone. I might need some help in this. So first, I thought it might be prudent to find someone who could help me out. After all, two heads are better than one. So I searched the school to see if there would be anyone who might be a useful ally in my venture. Fortunately for me, after a bit of digging, I was able to find three candidates who were similarly looking for a way out of the school. Unfortunately though, they seemed to have a few motivations of their own outside of just escape, and most of those seemed at odds with the others, so it looks like I'm going to have to choose only one of them to partner up with. The first option was a girl from my class, a girl named Yumi Shirakawa. Well, I wouldn't say we were super close per se, we always got along well enough. She's a bit rough around the edges, but has a good head on her shoulders 
Spiders. Oh my god, Stripe, have you seen what's going on? Everyone's panicking. It's pandemonium out there. You're the only one who can help me. Come on, if we work together, I'm sure we can figure out a way to help the school. Next up, there was Shinji Kuroi, but everyone in school calls him Charlie. I knew him through reputation alone. He was known for being rather rough and crass, and his appearance certainly stood out in the crowd. Despite that, it was clear that he was very quick-witted and could prove to be a useful ally in escaping this mess. <laughs> You're Stripe, right? Ugh, this place is going to hell, literally. Well, I'm not about to stick around and find out what happens when whoever caused this shit show shows up. You know, compared to those morons, you actually look pretty level-headed. What do you say to working together? If the two of us do that, we'll be able to get out of this hellhole that much quicker. Finally, there was Reiko Akanizawa, a girl a year below me, but already famous throughout the school for being mysterious. She seemed extremely level-headed compared to the rest of the student body, almost like she knew what was going on. Oh, you're Stripe from the class above me, right? It seems like we've been teleported to another world. Although, from the looks of things, you seem to be holding things together much better than everyone else around here. Hmm. You know, I might know a way that we could fix all this, but I can't do it alone. Do you think you could maybe help me out? And, well, that was it. Three options available to me. Yumi, Charlie, and Reiko. And, well, if I had to choose, you know, I think I'd go with... Yumi's from my class. She's the one I know best, so obviously I have to go with her. Plus, who doesn't want to be the hero that saves the entire school? Together, we decided to make our way around the old campus to see what exactly was going on. After scrummaging through some of the sports clubs to get some protective equipment, and picking up an ice pick from the storeroom, we began our investigation. We started with the top floors first and worked our way down. Most of the classrooms were just full of students that were as scared as we were and didn't have much to add. What's more, a lot of the hallways were blocked off by the school's disciplinary committee for some reason. They were a group that were supposed to protect the moral upstandingness of the school, and were run by one of the science teachers, uh, Mr. Otsuki's his name. A man infamous for having a stick shoved so far up his ass he was practically coughing up splinters every time he opened up his mouth. We uh, tried to press them for info on why they were blocking off parts of the school, but they wouldn't budge an inch. They just said we had to return to our classrooms. For the time being, we continued our efforts on places that we could reach. As we arrived on the first floor, we heard a certain rumor that was going around. Apparently, the gym has been decked out in this weird ritual-like equipment or something. Uh, the students who've seen it can't really describe it too well, so it seems like the best place for us to investigate. We turned down the hallway past the entrance that led to the gym, only to find... zombie dogs. They didn't look happy to see us. Seeing no other option, I gave a quick nod to Yumi before pulling out the ice pick I had discovered. She pulled out a baseball bat, and the two of us were, surprisingly, able to defeat the zombie dogs with only light injuries. Wow! <laughs> I, I can't believe we pulled that off! We did it, Stripe! We really did it! That just goes to show we really can save this school! <laughs> you know, maybe you're right, Yumi. I was, I was a little worried before, but maybe we really can. Wait, Stripe, look! I, I think more of them are coming! Pixies? Wait, wait, wait a minute. I, I've seen this in a video game before. Uh, uh, let me try something. That, that didn't work? Uh, am, am I missing something? Or, uh, Stripe, they're, uh, they're looking at us pretty menacingly. Oh, another soul looking to cross the River Styx. Sadly, or perhaps thankfully, based on your perspective, I'm afraid the rules governing the world you now inhabit are not the same as the ones that govern your own reality. In this world, demons are always looking to form contracts with those who have lost their way. They, here, shall be the guiding light that saves you from death. Look. Here comes one now. A Gagason, hmm? Unfortunately, at your current strength, only the very weakest demons will come to your aid. But 
if you live a life that is meaningful and true, I'm sure someday more powerful ones will find their way to you. Well then, until we meet again, traveler. Uh, um, uh, huh? Uh, I'm... I'm okay? Was that a dream, or did I, uh... uh wait, uh, Yumi, are, are you okay? Uh... As we both came to our senses and made sure the other was alright, I noticed a power inside of me that I'd never felt before. It wasn't much, per se. But it was definitely there, almost like there was another presence inside of me. For now, I decided to take that ferryman's words as truth and keep a note of this guardian inside of me. Still, despite having survived this whole ordeal, we were no closer to any answers than we were before. For now, we need some way to interact with those demons. However, my thoughts were cut short by a scream from down the hallway. We rushed over to see what was going on, only to find a member from the computer club being chased by a weird hunched over purple thing. Yumi and I stepped between the two of them and pulled out our weapons once more. I could feel the power from my guardian flowing through me as I entered the battle, and Yumi seemed to be experiencing a similar thing. Remembering what the pixies had done to us before, we were definitely more cautious with this encounter, but with our new strength from our guardians, the demon before us was easy pickings. With the demon well and truly dead, we turned to check on the computer club guy. He thanked us profusely for saving him. Apparently he'd been trying to contact the outside world through the internet, but the only thing he could come across was this strange app called the Demon Summoning Program from some guy calling himself Steven. Eh, sounds like a real nobody to me. Regardless, he offered us the disc that he had installed the program on, claiming it might be able to help us in interacting with demons. That being said, none of the computers in this room are exactly portable, so I'm not exactly sure how good a program will do us. But that's when I remembered my homeroom teacher, who'd been bragging earlier this morning about some new state-of-the-art laptop he had just bought. Formulating an idea, me and Yumi set off, and sure enough, we found our homeroom teacher hiding away in his classroom. We confronted him about the laptop, and while he was hesitant to part with it, he was able to construct some snazzy technical equipment that was capable of running the Demon Something program. I don't know how we managed to do that, but hey, it actually looks pretty damn stylish, if I do say so myself. Now, feeling far more prepared with some equipment, my new guardian, and this trusty comp, the two of us decided to head to the gym, this supposed ritual site. However, as we made our way down the hallway, we were suddenly stopped by... Ah, well would you look at that! If it isn't a pair of lowly worms that are beneath my contempt. But I shan't be angry with you. I am a merciful emperor, after all. I too used to be a human once, one named Idio Hazama, but now I am the one, the only, Demon Emperor. Using a mere fraction of my infinite power, I have dragged your pathetic school into the world known as the Expanse. You're the jerk that did this to the school? What the hell? Let us out of here! Yeah, seriously, what's your game here, Demon Emperor? Oh, I see you wish to escape. An ultimately worthless ambition, but I am feeling generous. Who knows, it may even be entertaining to watch you try and squirm your way out of that hole you found yourselves in. Very well, my loyal peon. Here's a hint. I've hidden a ring inside the gymnasium. Should you get your hands on it, I may see fit to let you wander around the expanse a little. I look forward to your results! <laughs> Hideo Hazuma, huh? So he really was the one behind all this. Huh? Do you know him? I've only heard about him through rumors, but the ones I did hear were really sketchy. We, we should be careful around him. Well, whatever the case, it looks like he's intent on toying with us, but we really have no other options. Whether this is a trap or just some twisted form of entertainment for him, the gym does look to be our only hope of getting out of here. So that's where we headed. Much like the rumors had said, the gym really did appear to have been used in some sort of weird ritual. There was even a giant ass pentagram in the middle. Yumi and I split up to search the place, and before long, Yumi called out that she had found something. She held out her hand and showed me a small ring she had found. 
It looked fairly plain at first glance, but at the same time, there was this almost otherworldly feel about it. I could definitely tell that this ring was special. As the two of us went in to examine the ring more closely, suddenly a voice echoed out throughout the gymnasium. So you found it, have you? Lovely work. I'm truly surprised your pea-sized brain to figure that out. If you take that ring into the expanse, you'll discover the room known as the Chamber of Seals. There are several seals hidden within that chamber, and a ring associated with each of them. If you ever wish to see your precious school return to your world, each and every one of those seals must be broken. There, that's an explanation that even your plebeian mind should be able to understand. That being said, don't you think this ring was just a little too easy to find? It's no fun for me if you just get to walk through this whole ordeal unimpeded. Oh, I know the perfect obstacle. Mary Jane. Come forth and help keep these two entertained! <laughs> the demon known as Mary Jane appeared from the sigil on the floor and immediately lunged towards us. The two of us, now having a bit of experience behind us dealing with demons, were more than ready for it. We took a few hits and were definitely bruised after the encounter, but it wasn't long before Mary Jane was defeated and we gained the Ring of Humility. Well, if what the Demon Emperor said is true, then we'll need to head into this expanse if we want to save the school. After stopping by the doctor's office to get our wounds treated, we went back to examine the exits from the school and see if we could find any way into this expanse. However, most of them seem to lead into nothing but an empty void, not exactly something I was willing to walk into willy-nilly. The only exit left that we hadn't been able to check out so far was on the third story, but unfortunately that exit had been blocked by one of the disciplinary committee goons last time we had checked, and I doubt he had moved on since then. We decided our best bet would be to meet with the head of the disciplinary committee himself, the science teacher Otsuki. Huh. Do we really have to do this? Otsuki always acts like such a creep. Look, he's the only one who can get the disciplinary committee to move. If we just explain everything to him, I'm sure he'll, uh... What are two children doing outside their assigned classrooms? I thought I instructed my disciplinary committee to keep everyone in line. Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, sorry to bother you, Mr. Otsuki. Uh, the thing is, we found this... Hmm, perhaps I was being too lenient. Oh, silly Otsuki. Whatever. I shall have to show my disciplinary committee what true discipline really is. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Mr. Otsuki, uh, you see, we really wanted to show you- uh, <laughs> What are you two still doing here? Leave at once and return to your assigned classroom. I must get ready for the Demon Emperor to shower me with his highest praise. Demon Emperor? What? Don't tell me you're working with that rainbowy freak show. Of course, my dear. I'm a man of science. Surely you've heard of the magnificent Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest. With the Demon Emperor taking the top of the food chain, as it were. It would be foolish to do anything but cast ourselves on his good graces. And I shall be at the forefront of this movement, protecting the school and shaping it to the Demon Emperor's wishes. Protecting the school, my ass? You're just trying to abuse this situation so you can have more power for yourself. We're taking this damn ring and getting the heck out of here, whether you like it or not. <gasps> The Ring of Humility, to think you would be foolish enough to try and get your hands on it. But no matter, as a key figurehead of this fine institution, I must punish those who would dare to defy its peace and sanctity. With my prowess and the Demon Emperor's blessing, I'm afraid there's no scientific basis for which one such as you could defeat me, the mighty Otsuki! <laughs> wow, that was uh, way easier than I expected. Um. He folded faster than Dalith did. Jeez, now I feel bad for attacking him. You don't think he actually, uh... Otsuki is not finished yet. Oh, thank God. To lose to one such as you. There's no scientific basis behind it. You haven't had the last of Otsuki, damn it. I will be back. I swear to science on it. And with that, Hutsky ran off towards the third floor. We chased after him, only to find that the guard he had placed on the third floor exit was no longer there, and the door was open. <sighs> I can feel it. This is the big stepping point, the one where we leave the relative safety of our familiar school and enter this weird other world known as the Expanse. I don't know what's waiting for us on the other side, but if we don't go now, 
we'll never be able to fix the situation we're in. Yumi and I gave each other one silent but determined nod, and pushed the door into the expanse. As the Demon Emperor had said, we found ourselves in a small room called the Chamber of Seals. A series of doors circled the exterior, while a single, even smaller room sat in the center. We entered that central room to find a... Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like a ball of space, almost like a tear in reality itself. As we approached it, the ring of humility suddenly reacted and began to glow. Before our eyes, the seal before us grew in size, and we heard the sound of a door unlocking coming from our left. We exited the small room to examine the doors surrounding it, and sure enough, found that one, and only one, had indeed been unlocked. Meaning, it was our only path forward. Leaving the Chamber of Seals behind, we entered this new door, unsure what could be waiting for us on the other side. And what it was, was a strange grey landscape, with what looked to be several twisting, interconnected paths. As we got accustomed to our surroundings, we noticed a small statue standing near the entrance. A statue of, uh... Wait, is that the Demon Emperor? Ah, this is my little worms. I see you've chosen to attempt this little challenge and seek a way out of the situation you found yourself in. Welcome to the domain of pride. The first of any sins mankind kills themselves in. I mean, just look at you. Assuming you have what it takes to save your precious school and taking the responsibility upon yourself. <laughs> ah, if that's not pride, I don't know what is. Hazuma, we won't let you get away with this. That's Demon Emperor to you, peon. <clears throat> Regardless, I'm sure soon enough you'll see just how powerless you are next to one as magnificent as myself. Until then, enjoy your little adventure! <laughs> <sighs> After yet another vainglorious speech, we were left to explore this new domain we found ourselves in. The domain of pride itself was crawling with all sorts of monsters. Zombies, ghosts, knockers, pixies, goblins, you name it. Still, despite how imposing it initially seemed, the domain itself was surprisingly small. Near the center of it stood a town of sorts, populated with all manner of gruesome residents. At first, Yumi and I were wary of them, but they seemed surprisingly civil. In fact, they were quick to offer us helpful advice, as well as very eager to barter with us, offering some much-needed upgrades to the old sports equipment we were still carrying. Feeling much more confident about our chances, the two of us plunged deeper into the world of pride, hoping to find yet another ring. And before long, that is exactly what we found. At a room right at the tippy top, we found the Ring of Restraint, sitting upon a pedestal in the middle of a rather ornate room. However, it, of course, wasn't going to be that easy, because just as we glimpsed it, a demon of considerable size stepped between us and the ring, its intentions very much clear. So, you are the puny mortals I've been waiting for. When the Demon Emperor told me he had an important task, I didn't think you'd be babysitting a couple of brats. Oh, very well. I hope you'll at least provide me with some entertainment. Curse this day, children, for it's the day that you die at the hands of the Almighty. Fine! <laughs> believe they just sell firearms to kids down here. Do you think we overdid it? I kind of feel bad for the big guy. Eh, what are you gonna do? With the Demon Vine defeated, we grabbed the Ring of Restraint and opted to return to the Chamber of Seals, using one of the handy geysers we found dotted throughout the dungeon as a shortcut back. Just like the last time, the ring was absorbed into the rift within the chamber, and it seemed to grow just a little bit bigger. What's more, yet another door surrounding it clicked open, and we were granted access to the next domain. I can see a pattern forming. This one certainly had a different feeling to the domain of pride, but still looked to be a series of halls filled with a variety of different beasts and demons. Once more, as we entered the new domain, we discovered another statue shaped like the Demon Emperor, and much the same as last time, this one too began to move and speak with us. So, you defeated Vine, did you? Hmm. You certainly are tenacious, so I'll give you that. Very well, this is the domain of gluttony. Humans are voracious, hungry beasts, aren't they? Always hungry for more, even when they already have more than enough to feed themselves. 
just another aspect of your creatures' filthy daily lives, huh? In any event, you'll find one of the most sinful of your kind in prison here. You'll have to deal with him if you should make it through this domain. <laughs> Ta-ta, my little ones. And so we began our investigation into the Domain of Gluttony. The demons here were even more powerful than the ones in the Domain of Pride, so we had to stay on our toes. The layout too was a lot more confusing than before, as we were forced to travel up and down floors multiple times, round twisting corridors, and occasionally run into the odd floor trap that would completely disorientate you with what direction you were headed. Still, through brute force, and a little ingenuity, we were able to work our way past all that and finally arrive at, uh... Step right up, folks, step right up. Got some maca burning a hole in your pocket? Well then, you've come to the right place. Here, at the Casino of the World of Gluttony, you can turn that maca into fantabulous prizes. What? Casino? I... Casino? Oh my god, a casino in the world of gluttony? That's kind of on the nose, don't you think? Come on, Stripe, we need to get out of here and keep looking for the ring. Ah, um, uh, Yumi. <clears throat> Yumi, yes, uh... You know, I was thinking, maybe the Demon Emperor has hidden some sort of secret for the next ring inside the casino. Uh, I think we should investigate it thoroughly to make sure. What? Um, well, I mean, I guess we could do to look around a little, but don't you think we'd be- Yes! Got it! Not too long! Just 20 or 30 games of Big or Small! I won't be too long! Oh no, I've made a big mistake, haven't I? Approximately 10 hours later. <laughs> Yes! Yes! It's all mine! The money! The power! It's all mine! You know, you're kind of proving the Demon Emperor's point that we're all a bunch of gluttonous pigs or whatever. Come on, we're getting the heck out of here already. <clears throat> well, that trick from the Demon Emperor was certainly cunning, but too bad for him our resolve was too strong to be tempted by a bunch of flashing lights and cheap prizes. Uh-huh. Uh, anyways, uh, we went back the way we came and found a separate fork we hadn't been down yet, and went that way instead. This way led to yet another village of Expanse residents, just like in the Domain of Pride. They too were more than willing to trade and talk with us, so after resupplying our weapons and demons, we asked around for any info we had on what this domain had to offer. It appears that the leader of the Domain of Gluttony is a demon known as Orcus, a ferocious, feral beast always looking for its next meal. However, it seems like Orcus wasn't always like that. In fact, most of the residents seem convinced that at one point he used to be human, and there seems to be something else controlling him. Hmm, maybe this has something to do with that gluttonous human the Demon Emperor was talking about. It also looks like some interloper the residents aren't familiar with has taken up residence somewhere deeper in the labyrinth. It wasn't much to go on, but it was something, I guess. So we headed off into the depths of the Domain of Gluttony. It grew only more and more confusingly twisty as we went on, and soon I began to wonder if we were even getting any closer to- Ah! Ah, jeez, I think I cracked my ass. Yumi, are you a- Well, 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 it seems two little flies have been caught in mine web. Oh, for the love of- What are you doing here? You humiliated me last we met. Me, the most trusted and amazing of the mighty Demon Emperor's servants. But that is a simple problem to remedy. All I must do is defeat you here. And now, with my new scientific enhancements, there's no scientific basis for what you could ever hope to defeat me. Ha 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 ha! Bow in fear now, children! Damn it! Is that a freaking machine gun? Oh, uh, yeah, like pretty much every store down here seems to sell them. Selling guns to children is, it's, it's unscientific. It, uh, yeah, you may have won this time, but Oski will never be defeated. Just your children, right? I will have my revenge. You'll see, you'll see. With Oski once again defeated, why do I feel like it's not the last time I'm going to say that? Uh, anyways, with that done, uh, we return to our trek through the domain of gluttony. Thanks to his pitfall, however, we were given access to a new part of the domain we couldn't have reached before, and decided to explore it thoroughly. Before long, we came across a rather large pair of rooms at the lowest floor we'd come across, it being the last place we could have looked. Yumi and I gave each other a quick nod before heading inside, only to find a, uh, kitchen. 
Not only that, sitting in the middle of the kitchen was an absolutely massive plate filled to the brim with enough food to feed an entire village. It was ridiculous, but uh, I mean, it smelled pretty good at least. As we stared in awe at more food than we'd ever seen in our entire lives, we suddenly heard a couple of voices heading towards us. The room itself was nearly devoid of anything other than the giant plates, and we wanted to hide, so we only had one option. Oh my god, are we... are we really where I think we are? Oh god, the smell! <coughs> oh no, what if this is the end? Is this how I'm gonna die inside some giant stupid pig's stomach? I'm sure if we put our heads together, there's some way we can get out of this situation. <gasps> but, but, the the only way out of here is... But, no, 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 there's gotta be some less disgusting way out of here. Uh, come on, let's just start walking, we'll figure something out. And so the two of us set off to explore the belly of the Great Vile Orcus. God, if I had a nickel for every time I had to explore the belly of a giant demon. In any event, it truly was as disgusting as it sounds. Weird, gross, fleshy walls and just the most horrible smell everywhere we went. To make matters worse, there were even demons living inside here, ready to attack us at every turn. Still, I wasn't about to croak in some giant pig's frickin' gullet. We pressed onwards, and before long, were able to find a chamber that was different than the rest of the innards. Almost like something had been living in it. Gah, what the hell is that? I don't know, but it doesn't exactly look friendly. Come on. And so we are forced to battle with the weird parasite living in Orcus's belly. But perhaps because it was simply a parasite who had never expected to be faced in battle on its own, it put up surprisingly little resistance. As we brought the thing down, suddenly, the entire room started to shake. As Yumi and I tried to keep our balance, a force unlike any other suddenly ripped the two of us out of the room and sent us flying to the ground. As I groggily got up, bewildered, I suddenly realized we were back in Orcus's room. Only, in Orcus's seat, rather than a massive pig demon, there instead sat... the... the principal. Wait, I, I don't get it. The principal was Orcus? It, why him? I get the feeling that the only one who really knows why Orcus was the principal is the Demon Emperor himself. Damn that son of a bitch. One way or another, I'm gonna make him explain. You mark my word- Oh my god, Stripe, look! It's another ring! Sure enough, I looked at where Yumi was pointing and found yet another ring waiting for me. This one called the Ring of Diligence. With this new ring now safely in our possession, we decided to head back to the Chamber of Seals. As with the other two times, the ring caused the rift to open just a bit more, and another door was opened, giving us yet another route forward. Predictably, near the entrance stood yet another statue of him, and once again, before our eyes, we watched as the stonework gave way, and the real Demon Emperor appeared before us once more. So you set that poor buffoon free of his curse? How noble of you. Regardless, now it's time to witness the next sin humanity is guilty of. Here lies the domain of sloth, a land riddled with the indolent, lazy dregs of humanity. Despite humanity's claim, greatness, they too are nothing more than listless, watch eye creatures, content to sit back and watch the horrors unfold around them. Then, despite having lifted a finger to do anything about it, they have the audacity to complain that no one came to save them. Can you? Truly free mankind from its own slothful existence. <laughs> well, I wish you luck in that endeavor. The domain of sloth, huh? Eh, that shouldn't be too bad, should it? I mean, it's the sin of laziness. What's the worst that could be thrown at us for that? At the very least, there's no way this could be worse than being thrown into a giant pig's belly. We began our exploration of the dungeon, only to find that compared to the domain of gluttony, sloth was far easier to navigate. Sure, the demons were more powerful, but the hallways were long and straight, with few dead ends in sight. 
That being said, unlike the other domains, there didn't appear to be a town present in this domain. Instead, there was just a handful of residents, kind of haphazardly scattered throughout the domain. What an odd place this is. Still, we're making it through the floors in record time, so the domain of sloth might very well be the easiest one yet. Oh there, buddy, watch where you're walking. Whoa, uh, uh, hello? Uh, are, are you one of the residents here? <laughs> Nah, I'm just a freelance demon hired by the Demon Emperor to work here. Wouldn't be caught dead in a dump like this if I could help it. Wait, you're working for him? Does that mean that we have to fight you too? Whoa, take it easy there, sweetheart. I'm not that kind of demon. I'm more of a, uh, overseer kind of thing. I'm part of the group that's running this fancy new mining operation that the Demon Emperor has set up. A mining operation? Yeah, looks like the big boss managed to rope a bunch of human brats into digging up some ring what's buried in the wall somewhere. We're just here to make sure everything runs all smooth. So the ring's stuck in a wall somewhere? Who knows, but wherever that thing is, rumor has it that that thing's stuck in there pretty damn deep. But hey, if the operation goes long, that just means I get paid better. Anyways, you can go have a look yourself. I need to get back to my shift. We push past the odd demon, and into the depths of the domain of sloth. Sure enough, what awaited us was a massive mining operation being carried out by the entirety of the Karakazaka student body, as well as its faculty. Yumi and I were torn. I mean, we could try and break the students free of their shackles and bring them back to the school, but that would just leave us with no ring and no chance of escape. So, realistically, the only option we have is to let the students keep digging and hope they turn up the ring quickly. <sighs> well, I mean, how long could it possibly take? You're about to enter a world of uncertainty. A world of child labor and demon overseers. You are about to enter the domain of sloth. Picture, if you will, a young man and woman on a quest to save their school from a tyrannical demon emperor. They find themselves forced to wait for their fellow students to uncover a hidden ring. With no indication of how long that could take, they are left with no option but to kill time until said ring is discovered. They start with the simple things. They stroll through the domain's various halls, converse with its few inhabitants, and enjoy the catchy background music. But before long, the hallways have all been traversed. The citizens all met, and still, no sign of the ring. So instead, they set their sights on different goals to while away the time. Instead, why not focus on a more athletic type of thing? A vigorous round of boxing with the local fauna could be just the ticket to alleviate their humdrum times. They engage in a series of horseplay with various bicorns and mandrakes. And should they ever grow tired, a simple trip to the local healing spring would alleviate all their fatigue in a single soap. However, as they do, they begin to notice a paradox that wasn't apparent before. No matter how much time they spend in battle or healing in the spring, no actual time seems to pass around them. It seems, somehow, time only truly moves when they do. The boy and girl begin to grow bitter at this revelation. So much time wasted and yet still no ring to show for their efforts. Eventually, they discover that the tunnels the other students had mined out were in fact devoid of demons. This gave them a safe haven to pass time without tiresome battles to grind it to a halt. And so they began to pace. Back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Series of identical rooms repeating over and over and over again. Soon, it seemed as if the entire world was starting to close in on them. The only thing they had left was the sound of their footsteps, and that incessant music, always playing, always going, again and again and again and again and again! It was taunting them! It had always been taunting them! If the boy and girl were ever to escape this hell, their only course of action would be to kill whoever was making this music! Of course, that must be it. It's them! Whoever had forced them into this whole situation, they were the one that was making the music. If they killed them, they could escape all of this and never have to be here again! The boy turned to the girl and laid out his idea before her, proudly, confidently. Uh, 
Music? Uh, what the hell are you talking about, Stripe? There's no music. The boy broke down and wept. How long would this all last? If only he knew. If only. Eventually, the final ring was discovered, and we were free. Free from ever having to look at the Domain of Sloth ever again. Foolish mortals, for thousands of years I lay dormant. Now awakened, I shall... I said, free from having to look at the Domain of Sloth ever again. After a brief stop back at the school to... Come to terms with the atrocity we had just been put through, we were ready to set off on our next adventure. So of course, ring, seal, blah blah blah, new door opens to us, where are we gonna head this time? As per usual, a statue stood between us and the new domain. Well, if it isn't my dear sweet Stripe and Yumi, did you enjoy the domain of Slaw? You monster! How dare you do something to us! So heinous, so utterly Boring! <laughs> ah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Well, the joke's on you. Even when you resorted to such underhanded tactics, you still couldn't stop us. As long as Stripe and I are working together, there's nothing you can throw at us that we can't beat. Yeah, you tell him, Yumi. Ah, yes, human bonds. Such beautiful, precious things you cling on to. Too bad even the slice bit of pressure that easy to break than yawn for a pair of scissors. That goes doubly so here in the Domain of Envy. Oh, for the love of- what are you playing at this time? Why, this of course. Come forth, my minion! Yumi, mi amore, I've been waiting for you my entire life. Come with me. Together, we shall make beautiful music together. That's it? Uh, nice try, Demon Emperor. But there's no fucking way that's gonna actually work on someone like- oh my god. He's- he's so dreamy. What? Uh, Yumi? Sorry, Stripe. He's been waiting for me his entire life. I have to be with him. Oh, the look on your face is priceless. You, but I, uh... What? What the fuck? Oh, my dear Stripe. Can't you see? You were never special to her. Anyone would have done. You were just the one who happened to be there. What? No, that doesn't make sense. You must have done something to her. Now, what shall you do? Struggle uselessly to get back when it was never yours? Or simply give up like the pathetic wretch that you are? I shall enjoy watching whatever little skit you play out! <laughs> and just like that, I was... alone. Well, I mean, I guess I'm not totally alone. I still have my demons. Hey, Cerberus, buddy old pal, you ready for a rip-roaring adventure? Ah, <sighs> oh, crap, this is gonna be hard, isn't it? <laughs> Still, I couldn't just give up. There's gotta be something going on in this place that caused Yumi to change like that. The Yumi I know would never give up on her quest to save the school just for some pretty boy. We gotta talk with her. And so I ventured, alone, into the Domain of Envy. The place was an absolute maze. Twisting random corridors, dead ends, and worst of all, so many damn rooms absolutely devoid of light. Rooms so dark and mysterious, it was impossible to do anything other than Feel your way around the edges and hope you find a door. If those rooms really start piling up, I'm never going to be able to find my way around here. Fortunately for me, however, another expanse town exists close to the entrance of the Domain of Envy. There, I was able to resupply and, importantly, get my hands on a handy little device called a view sphere. It was a small little orb that, even in the dark, allowed me to get some sort of bearing on where exactly I was in proportion to the world around me. Still, while I could now at least tell where I was going, that didn't make the journey any less treacherous. Aside from the pitch black rooms, the dungeon was also chock full of pitfalls, sliding floors, 
bars, disorientation traps, and of course many, many powerful demons. To make matters even worse, as we climbed to higher and higher floors, my comp suddenly started to act up. Fortunately, it had an emergency battery that let me keep my current demon summoned, but I lost the ability to summon new ones, communicate with enemies, or even look at my mini-map. Ugh, what a truly horrendous place this Domain of Envy is. Still better than the Domain of Sloth, though. Eventually, as I made my way through the many floors, I came across one floor that was almost entirely pitch black, save for one or two rooms. This confusion was made only worse with the introduction of warp pads, which would randomly teleport me to different sections of the room, making my already tenuous sense of direction lose any hope of being completely certain of where I was. Still, as I blindly made my way around the floor, I just so happened to stumble across a small side room hidden away in a corner. Inside, I found something truly unexpected. Is that just a flaming sword? Huh. Well, I mean, it's not like I'm not gonna try and take it, right? Okay, that thing's not fucking budging, but I, uh... Oh. Huh. Alright, well, I decided to keep a mental note of that and kept on moving. After another quick stumble through the pitch black that made up 90% of this dungeon, I reached a small room cut off from the rest of the floor. One that seemed to exude an aura different to that of the rooms before. Oh, thank God! Yumi, I finally found you! Uh, Stripe? So, y you really came all the way up here? Of course I did, Yumi! You're like my best friend! I had to come and save you! Save me? <laughs> uh, Yumi? And what exactly would you be saving me from, Stripe? The demons? The expanse? Well, I don't need that anymore. I'm just as much of a warrior as you are, Stripe. Only now, with the Demon Emperor's powers, I surpassed even your abilities. Wait, Yumi, you gotta listen to me. The Demon Emperor is just messing with your head. He used that weird mannequin guy to- So, so what if he is? Thanks to him, I finally have the power to achieve the things I always wanted. Parents who actually have the time for me instead of always leaving for work. Friends who care about what I have to say instead of nothing but pointless gossip. Someone who chooses me before anyone else! Ah! Cerberus! Turtek! No! I see it all clearly now, Stripe. You never did care for me, did you? I was just the only option you had left. Well, I don't need you either. Yeah. Uh, uh, wait, did you turn me into a bat? This is the end, Stripe. With the Demon Emperor's powers, you don't stand a chance against me. I know you can't actually die in this world, but when you do get revived, don't come looking for me ever again. Is this the end of the line for me? Am I really gonna die like this? I... 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 Maybe it's for the best. Maybe she's right. Maybe... Maybe without even realizing it, I just... I just took Yumi for granted. Maybe I just never should have chosen to go with the... Uh, chosen? No. No, 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 that's right! I did make a choice! Giving in to despair here is just exactly what the Demon Emperor wants. I am not going to let that happen, and I am not going to let all that I've worked towards up till now end here. Ah, what, what the? the? Look, Yumi, listen. You want someone who thinks of you first, who chooses you? Well, you're important to me, okay? <laughs> what? No, 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 I'm, I'm not. not. You're, you're just, just trying to get, get out of the situation so you can save, save your own eye. No, no, listen. At the beginning... I didn't know who I could trust, who I could believe in. There were so many people with so many conflicting ideas of what they wanted to do. Charlie seemed like he could be a decent fighter. Reiko even seemed to know what was going on. Look, in the end, I decided I had to travel with you, okay? Well, well you probably only did that because, because that was the only option you had, had left or something. No, I chose you because, because of what you said. Out of everyone I talked to, you were the only one whose first thought was to try and save the school. You wanted to make sure everyone made it back, putting it even above your own safety. And well, I... I thought that was pretty incredible, you know? Right. I... Oh, Stripe, I've... I've been such an idiot, half an eye. I've been so frustrated with everything in my life for so long now, and when when the Demon Emperor showed up with that guy and just 
offered me everything I could have ever dreamed of. I... I just... I jumped at the opportunity to take it, even when I knew that it was the wrong thing to do. I... You know... I think the Demon Emperor's kind of right, in a way. Sins like envy are just part of who we are, a fundamental part of being human. But, you know... The thing he doesn't see, the thing that truly makes us who we are, is that we can overcome those emotions. Which, I gotta say, Yumi, you did with flying colors. Stripe, that's... <laughs> that's so freaking cheesy, my god! <laughs> you sound like an old man. Hey, you always try to be sincere, come on! <laughs> I know, I know, I was just teasing you a little. Thanks for everything, Stripe. I... I think that's exactly what I needed to hear. Hey, come now. Let's stick together till we save the school, and we'll call it even, alright? <laughs> yeah, you got it. Oh, um, you know, actually, now that you mention it, there is one other thing I could use your help with. Oh, uh, what's that? Well, you kinda turned me into a bat, so could you help me get back to a healing spring? Oh my god, I was so caught up in the moment I didn't even notice. Come on, we gotta get you decursed! <laughs> Not so fast, children! For the love of- That had better not be what I think it is! To protect the world with the power of science! To unite all children with these threats of violence! To denounce the evils of truth- No, I am putting a pin in that right now! What in the name of all that is holy are you even doing here? Ha! <laughs> like you even need to ask! Of course I have come to have mine revenge! And show off the fruits of my latest experimentation! With these newest of the new scientific arguments, you stand no chance of, uh, of, uh... Wait, are, are you a bat? Look, it's a long story, okay? Now, would you mind? We have more important things to do than stroke your ego. Children turning into bats isn't scientific at all! Now, uh, whatever. With this new scientific augmentation, you'll be singing a new tune soon, child and bat! For you face the almighty power of the great Otsuki! Ha 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 ha! Looks like Otsuki's blasting off again! <sighs> Let's just get out of here already. Agreed. Well, with that obstacle out of the way, we said our goodbyes to the Domain of Envy and returned once more to the Chamber of Seals. Once more, we heard the sound of a door unlocking and headed off into the next domain that awaited us. This domain felt quite a bit different from the other ones. The air felt almost... stale, like the place hadn't been touched in years. Perhaps most surprisingly of all, though, there was no Demon Emperor statue at the entrance to greet us. Making sure to keep our eye out, Yumi and I began our march through the unknown domain. Somehow this place ended up being even more disorientating than the Domain of Envy. Sure, there were no doors to pitch blackness, but the place seemed to twist and turn back in on itself over and over and over again. The odd warp pad and pitfall certainly didn't help, but the most glaring issue was just the sheer size of the dungeon. It was magnitudes bigger than anything we'd encountered before, and with that many more demons to accompany it, it truly was an intimidating place to experience. However, as we stumbled our way through, not really sure whether we were headed in the right direction or just running in circles, we suddenly came across a small out-of-the-way room where we found, uh, wait, a statue again. Hmm? Oh, it's you. Still on your benevolent quest to save the day or whatever. I must say the tedium of this whole thing has really started to hit me now. You! Bastard! If you're bored, then send us back, you freak! Get us out of your self-obsessed narcissism, you pale little piece of- Oh, such fiery temper. If only I could capture a hint of that passion. Alas, that would make me human. And as I've already shown, that is a fate worse than death. Just, it's it's okay, Yumi. He's not worth it. We'll just overcome this trial like we have all the others. Together. Such noble bearing. Truly, you must be the hero fated to save your precious school. But could that noble visage be, in fact, a lie? Inside all humans, there exists the desire to take what is theirs, to own what they can't have. Here in the domain of creed, such desires will ultimately lead to your downfall. And truly resist such glorious temptation. I look forward to finding out.
With the Demon Emperor once again cryptically disappearing, Yumi and I push past the former statue and deeper into the domain, only to find yet another town was situated at the heart of it. It wasn't a very big town, but it had the facilities necessary to allow us a chance to resupply and pick up a few better weapons. As we did that, we also made sure to gather as much information about the Domain of Greed as we could from the residents. The residents themselves were rather vague, but seemed insistent that greed would lead to the downfall of anyone that made contact with the Domain's ruler, a demon known as Jifei. Unsure what exactly greed meant in this situation, we headed off into the deepest reaches of the Domain of Greed, the supposed lair of Jifei, only to find one long, continuous hallway absolutely full to the brim with treasure chests. There were dozens of them, all neatly lined in a row. More treasure than I had ever seen before. Ah, oh, for God's sakes, are you serious? Is this going to punish us if we open the chest to some sort of elementary school level metaphor for greed? Then I just won't open them. We pushed our way past the many, many chests, and before long arrived at the end, where, sure enough, we found the demon Jifei waiting for us. So, this is the final boss of the dungeon? I guess because we didn't take anything, it only manifested as a weak little fox? Are we really supposed to fight this stripe? I kind of feel bad if I had to hit something so cute. Uh, maybe I'll just try lightly tapping it? It's Stripe! Oh, come on! You saw me! I barely touched him and he turned to ash! <sighs> Whatever, let's just grab the damn ring and get out of here. Not so fast, children. I, the great old ski, have appeared before! No, 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 no! <sighs> we have kicked your ass again and again an infuriating number of times, and yet you keep coming back! Well, no more! This time, I'm going to make sure you never- Psych! <laughs> I am not here to fight you fools! Now that I have the Ring of Kindness, I shall return to my lab, where I'll be able to fully unleash the final ultimate scientific power I've been working towards! If you want your ring back, you'll have to face me, sir! <laughs> Otsuki, out! I... I... How in the hell did that man become a teacher? He is irredeemable! <sighs> Guess we better go after him. We're gonna need that ring. No. This time, I'm going to make sure he really learns his lesson. <sighs> Come on, it's a bit of a detour, but I've gotta go pick something up. My newest guardian should be able to help me out here. Ah, so you finally arrived, children! Took your sweet time getting here, but that has only ensured your doom! For with it, I have managed to achieve the pinnacle of plasma-powered scientific perfection! With this new body, your measly bullets will be unable to affect me in any way! At last, you shall see the true power of science! Now die, children! Grr! What sort of weapon could possibly penetrate me in plasma-powered body? Oh, this? This is the Demonic Blade Hino Kagatsuchi. Demonic Blade? Uh, yeah. Flaming Demonic Swords are unscientific, I... If it's so unscientific, Otsuki, then you won't mind if I perform a little experiment! Scientific <laughs> science could lose to such... Uh, Otsuki... Is it finally over? God, I hope so. Anyways, we got the ring, let's get out of here. And, well, just like that, the Ring of Kindness was ours. We returned once more to the Chamber of Seals for, perhaps, the final time. As we offered up the ring to the rift, it started to vibrate uncontrollably. The hole in space-time grew wider and wider, until suddenly, it broke. Yumi and I were swallowed up in a dark void. I braced myself for what was to come, but nothing did. As I carefully opened my eyes to see what had happened, I suddenly realized that we were back in the school again. Huh. That being said, something seemed... off. It was quiet. Like, way too quiet. Even after the whole expanse thing, you could always hear something. You know, students moving around, hush whispers, something like that. But there was nothing here, just dead silence. Yumi and I gave each other worried looks before splitting up to see what was going on. What we found was... nothing. 
No students, no teachers, not another living thing inside the entire school. Not a soul here, or here, here, or even here, uh, uh, no wait, no, go go back a sec. The, the doctor? Wait, wait, what's, what's she doing here? Unfortunately, she had no answers for us either, as she explained she had no idea what had happened. She just woke up here alone. Huh, how odd. Uh, well, we told the doctor to stay put while we moved on to search the rest of the school. At first, everything looked the same as it always had. Same offices, same classrooms, same gym. Okay, the gym's still a shadow cathedral, but that's sort of normal. However, as we headed higher and higher and made our way towards the roof, that was where we discovered something we weren't ready for. Where the roof should have been instead stood... the... school? Again? Only it wasn't quite the school, like, it was clearly the same design, but it was different, almost distorted in a way. It was almost like we were inside a dream or something, like everything around us wasn't quite real. Well, whatever this place is, clearly it's important. Perhaps this will lead us to where the Demon Emperor is hiding. Yumi and I gave each other one final determined nod before heading into the dreamlike school building. To call the place confusing would be an understatement. It was a long, endless string of identical hallways broken up with pitfalls, warp points, invisible walls, and of course enough demons to make even old Lucifer crack a sly smile. It was a long, long perilous journey through the dream school, but eventually, finally, we made it to the place where the true demon emperor resided, and we were finally able to confront him. Stripe. Yumi. So you managed to make it here after all, huh? Demon Emperor, we played your stupid little game, and we came out on top every time. Now it's time to make good on your deal and return this school to the real world. Hmm, no, I don't think I'll be doing that. Huh? But y you promised us. I promised you nothing! I thought watching your little misadventures traipsing through all of humanity's great sins were providing you with something, but all it did was prove me right. You notice here in this school, there is nothing left. That is because I need nothing. There is nothing that humanity can provide that is worth preserving, so I shall destroy it all, along with all you pathetic vermin inside. You never planned on letting us go to begin with, did you? You threw all that crap at us about humanity's sins, but even if you were proven wrong, you were never going to listen, were you? You may think whatever you want, but I am omniscient, omnipotent, the great, the all-knowing. I am the Demon Emperor. that, we were forced into a fight with the mighty Demon Emperor. His attacks were fierce, his health pool absolutely massive, and he had the ability to greatly weaken our entire party in a debilitating sort of way, if you catch my drift. However, we had come too far just to lose to some selfish kid in a demon costume. With my magic sword, my demon partners, and of course, my best friend Yumi, we were able to withstand the Demon Emperor's assault, and ultimately, come out victorious. No! How could one such as I? As I slowly opened my eyes, a realization began to dawn on me. The warm glow of sunlight was creeping in from the school's entranceway. The distant sound of cars and various other city life could be faintly heard behind the gentle hum of the school. The faint noise of various students, one by one, experiencing something between surprise and relief. Yumi and I gave each other a quick glance before walking out the front doors. I... I can't believe it. Are... are we finally home? Yeah. We, we did it, Yumi! I, uh, I, are you crying? <laughs> Sorry. It's 
just we were stuck in there for so long. A part of me thought we'd just get stuck in some other stupid test, but but we're really home. Yeah, yeah, we really are. Although, judging from the look around us, I'm not sure if any time at all has passed since we disappeared. I wonder if anyone outside is going to believe what happened here. Aw, is Stripe worried that he's not going to get some big heroes welcome back home? What? I... Well, maybe a little, but... <laughs> Fair enough. Come on, let's get back inside and see how everyone else is doing. And with that, our little adventure came to an end. Yumi and I returned to our regular everyday lives like nothing had happened. It was almost a little anticlimactic in a way, but... Who cares? At the end of the day, the most important thing is we saved the day. The students and school were all free to return to their ordinary lives. And I mean, at the very least, we were able to solve some of the mysteries surrounding that place at least. Like, well, that one thing that, uh... Wait, now that I think about it, did we solve any of the mysteries? Who the heck was the Demon Emperor? What was the Expanse? Why did any of that happen? It... Well, 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 look who came crawling back. Guess Shirakawa couldn't provide you with all the answers you needed, huh? Look, I don't regret choosing Yumi's route, but you clearly have some knowledge she doesn't. Just tell me who the Demon Emperor is so I can get some damn closure here. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, not so fast, big guy. You're gonna need to complete my route if you want those answers. <sighs> you know what? Fine. I'm cool with having another go around. Plus, it'll be cool to see how your route differs from Yumi's. Oh, it doesn't. I'm sorry, what? My Root and Yumi's, they don't differ at all. At, at least not until the final fight. Wait, 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 wait. They don't differ at all. So you and I are going to get eaten by a giant pig demon. Mm-hmm. And you're going to get won over by a weird mannequin man made by the Demon Emperor? No, oh, you better believe it. But wait, if that's true, then that means that, uh... Oh. oh, I'm afraid that the domain of sloth is quite inevitable. But you promise, you promise me, if I go through this, I'm going to get answers on who the Demon Emperor is? Oh, you'll get all the answers you could ever want there. Trust me. Uh, cue the montage. to make, make it here, here after all. all. Demon Emperor, we played your stupid little game, and we came out on top every time. Now it's time to make good on your deal and return this school to the real world. Hmm, no, I, I don't, don't think, think I'll be doing that. I promise you nothing! I thought watching your little misadventures traipsing through all of humanity's great sins were providing you with something, but all it did was prove me right. You notice here in this school, there is nothing left. That is because I need nothing. There is nothing that humanity can provide that is worth preserving, so I shall destroy it all, along with all you pathetic vermin inside. Well, if that's the case, Idio, then why is Dr. Kayama still here? Dr. Kayama... Yeah, she is still here. Wait, but why, why is she still here? That's, um... <clears throat> it, it, it doesn't matter why she's here. Really? Because I'm starting to think that you can't let go of your humanity as easily as you claim. Sh shut up, shut up, shut up! Oh, Reiko. You think you know me. I am the Demon Emperor. The all-knowing and all-seeing. Destroy you here and prove once and for all that I am the only truth in this world!
As we brought the Demon Emperor down, once again, he slumped to the floor. However, as he did, Reiko quickly ran over to his body and picked up something. It was, a uh, ring. One just like the ones we'd been collecting over our journey. Come on, Stripe. This ring is an important part in us being able to help Hideo. Wait, it is? Uh, how do you know that? Just what the heck is go- Ah! What the- Where the hell are we? We're inside the Demon Emperor's mind. Or should I say, Hideo Hasuma's mind. The mind of my brother. He's your brother? I- uh, You're gonna need to start explaining some things, because this is a lot to take in. Hmm. Actually, I think it'll be easier if we start moving first. We're inside Idio's mind, right? His memories should be able to explain everything far faster than I ever could. And so the two of them set off into the depths of the mind of the Demon Emperor. Or should I say, the boy named Idio Hazama. As they went, visions of his life appeared before them, explaining everything that had happened. Idio Hazama was a gentle soul as a boy, always clinging to his family, his mother, his sister. However, one day, his mother left, taking his sister with her, leaving Idio alone, forgotten. But he didn't give up. As he entered high school, he swore he would find someone. Someone who could be special to him. Someone that he had a unique bond with. The first person to fit that criteria was the school doctor. She was always so kind to Idio, so understanding. However, when he confessed his feelings to her, she rejected them, leaving him alone once again. All of the other students would make fun of him constantly, and poor Idio felt abandoned. However, he did not give up there. He gave it one more go, this time opting to give a love letter to a girl his own age. However, the girl, seeing him only as that creepy guy that never said anything, she too rejected his feelings, leaving him alone. As Stripe and Reiko reached the end of Idio's memories, they came upon its final chamber, where once again they found the Demon Emperor standing there. I can't believe once as insignificant as you managed to make it this far, going so far as to enter my very mind. Idio, we're here to help you. What would you hope to know? You disappeared from my life just like everyone else. No one can know the suffering I've been through. No one! That may have been true before, but you have to understand me. The only good thing to happen to me was that chance encounter with another realm where I was able to get these demonic powers. <sighs> Without that, I never would have got to realize my vengeance. I won't be stopped by you, Reiko. I am the Demon Emperor! No! I'm the Demon Emperor! The all-knowing, all-seeing ruler of the Expanse! I... I can't lose! Why must they always pick on me? Why am I always left alone? Why? <laughs> there, there. Idio, you've gone through so much, and you had to do it all on your own. But I'm here for you now. Reiko, you, you're not going to leave me? I never wanted to leave you before. That was all Mom's choice. But even if the entire world turns against you, I will always stick with you, idiot. Oh, Reiko, I, I've been such a fool. I never even realized you were here this whole time. Strike, you're gonna have to leave here. I know that the world isn't gonna be able to forgive my brother for what he did, but I, at the very least, need to stay with him. The two of us, I don't know where we're gonna go, but at least we'll be together. Go, return to the school. It should be back to the way it once was, once you leave here. I hope you can lead a peaceful and fulfilling life, and, well, thank you for everything you did for me. And so, with the Demon Emperor defeated, and the school returned to the real world, life returned to the way it once was. Stripe was free to become Look, a- Look, can we... 
Could we just end this already? Oh, uh, uh, okay, um, is something the matter? Is something the matter? Did you just see the same thing I just saw? That's all this ever was. Some loser incel trying to replace his mom with whatever woman showed up and showed him the slightest bit of human decency. Then, when he successfully creeped a lot of them out, he decided to blame humanity instead. That's all this ever was. Some big baby's temper tantrum. And I'm just supposed to accept that that's all I've been working towards? Well, um, uh, we could... Try Charlie's Root? That might be- You know damn well Charlie's Root is gonna be a pile of ass! You don't even save the goddamn school in that route! Well, I mean, that's all we can really do. We're here to summarize games. We can't just change the ending because we don't like it. But... <sighs> We're supposed to summarize good games. Games that make us feel something. Games that change the way we look at life. I've put so much time into this game and... This is all it ended up being. All it ever was. Let's just get this over with and get out of here already. Well, well, well. You're looking pretty glum there, friend. Huh? I, it, who the hell are you? Name's Akira. Sounds to me like you've got some beef with the Demon Emperor. Well, yeah, of course I do, but what can I even do about it? I've already seen how each route ends. It's all... Pointless. <laughs> what? Are you laughing at me? What? Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's just... You haven't seen every route that this game has to offer. Wait, what do you mean? I, I went through the beginning of the game. There, there was no one else. You just haven't figured out how to follow it yet. Come on. I'll show you a path unlike anything this game has shown you before. If you're saying I play favorites, you're wrong. I love all my children equally. I don't care for Joe. 